Hello and welcome. This is Kendra. It's a new quarter and that means it's time for a new card making challenge. Kendra's card challenge number 12. This is a quarterly card making challenge where you can create a bunch of cards using just six sheets of six inch by six inch pattern paper with no scraps. It's like a one sheet wonder times six. Of course, you'll need other card stock and supplies, but for this challenge, you can create 15 A2 sized cards and have a chance to win a lot of prizes by sharing your creations throughout the quarter. This challenge runs from October 1st through December 31st of 2023. And there are 20 company prize sponsors with over $1,000 worth of prizes that will be given away throughout this challenge. I'll share details on the prizes and how to enter the challenge shortly. To sum up the challenge, you would use the cutting templates and card sketches that are provided in the free PDF printable that's available for download on my website, kindredscardchallenges.com, and you'll want to pick out six coordinating pattern papers and assign them to each of the color-coded papers A through F on the printable. This can be either 6x6 paper or 12x12 paper that's been cut down to 6x6, and if you use double-sided paper, that's even better because you'll have more options in case you don't like two of the patterns together. You can just use the other side. Then you'll cut the papers using the cutting templates and sort the pieces for each of the 15 card sketches. You'll also need some matching colored card stock for the layers and card bases. And then you can decorate the cards with whatever stamps, dies, ephemera, or embellishments you'd like following the sketches. This challenge is a great way to use up those paper pads and get a set of coordinating cards in the process. The first page of the printable shows the cutting guides for the first two sheets of pattern paper. The yellow and orange are labeled as paper A and B. All of the measurements are listed for each piece, and there are scissors on each cutting guide to show which part of the paper needs to be cut first. There's circled numbers on each piece, which indicates which card sketch that that piece goes with. The dark gray triangles show banners that you'll cut out of some of these pieces. There's also arrows on each piece to show the direction of how it will be placed on each of the card sketches, basically which direction it faces. For this challenge, you'll want to use patterns that are non-directional, meaning that it doesn't matter which way you turn the paper because the arrows do not go the same direction. If you want to use a directional pattern, you may have to rotate the card sketch to have it face the right way. Just know that it's best to use non-directional patterns for this particular challenge to make it a little bit easier. You'll see there's a couple of half circles here on paper B, so you'll need either a circle punch or circle dies and a die cutting machine. I'll talk more about this later when I show how to cut the papers. And then the third and fourth sheets of pattern paper, which are aqua and green, are labeled as papers C and D. And then the fifth and sixth sheets are the pink and blue, and they are labeled as papers E and F. Now here are the card sketches. There's a total of 15 cards for this challenge, and this page shows the first six. Since everything is color coded, it makes it easy to see what goes where. But everything that is gray, black, or white, you can use white or colored cardstock, or even additional sheets of pattern paper if you'd like. For the sketches that don't have very many pieces of pattern paper, you can always use things like embossed panels, vellum, or stenciled panels to give it more detail. Card sketch one shows a rectangle piece from paper A that has a diagonal cut and it's split apart with a strip of paper B between the two pieces and a circle accent for the focal point. You can use an embossed or stenciled or printed panel for the white piece. And then sketch two uses two three inch squares from papers A and B. Sketch three is a neat pattern that looks kind of spiral. And this is, this is using several different sizes of half circles with one being from paper B and the others can be coordinating colors. And then sketch four uses a strip from paper B with a three inch square from paper A and a smaller square in the center where you can place your image or sentiment. Sketch five uses two pieces from paper B with coordinating cardstock for the opposite sides. Sketch six has pieces from papers A and C with a couple of banners layered on top. And the, this page on the printable includes a QR code that you can scan with the camera on your phone, which will take you directly to the Kendra's Card Challenges Facebook group page where you can join and post your photo of all 15 cards to enter the challenge. If you're not a member of the Kendra's Card Challenges Facebook group, you'll need to agree to some group rules before you'll be approved to join, but this just makes it easier to be able to enter and go right to the page. This next sheet shows sketches seven through 12. Sketch seven has strips placed at a diagonal from all the papers except for paper C. You can use a rectangle or any other large shape in the center 
or even a word die. Sketch 8 has three circles with one being from paper C and the one in the back is actually a half circle and it comes from paper B. It's just hidden behind the other circles. And then for sketch 9 there's a large strip across the bottom from paper C and there's a center rectangle where you can place your focal image and a sentiment with a small strip to the left from paper B. And sketch 10 has paper D across the bottom with a flag from paper B in the top right corner. Sketch 11 has a back panel from paper E and flags alternating from paper C and F and some layered rectangles for the images or sentiments. Sketch 12 has a diagonal strip from paper F in the center of the card base with two quarter inch strips on both sides. And then in the center it has a circle. You could always add another layer behind this if you don't want to glue these pieces directly onto the card base. You don't have to follow the sketches exactly. They're just meant to be a starting point to help get your creative juices flowing. If you don't like some of the patterns together, maybe because they clash or the colors don't match well, you don't have to use them. Swap it out for another pattern or even use solid colored cardstock. Remember, this is meant to be fun, not stressful. Use whatever you think looks good. I don't have a lot of rules, but you do need to make a full set of 15 cards to enter for prizes. If you have scraps instead of cutting six papers and you want to use those instead to make a full set of cards, that is totally fine. This next sheet shows the last three sketches, 13 through 15. Sketch 13 has banners from paper C, D, and E with several layers of circles on top of a coordinating banner strip. For card sketch 14, this shows two rectangles, one from paper C and the other from paper D with a layered circle in the bottom right corner. And finally for sketch 15, the back panel is paper F with a strip from paper E toward the bottom and a rectangle above it where you can stamp your image or sentiment or both. The bottom part of this page includes instructions with some helpful hints like using larger mats or layers to cut out smaller mats that will be hidden behind the pattern paper to save on supplies and also rotating or flipping the card sketches to make it work with your theme. You can adjust the size of the sentiments to meet your needs and even add extra details and embellishments if you'd like. The card sketches really are just a starting point, like I said before. The last paragraph explains how to enter the challenge to be eligible to win prizes. For a complete list of prizes you can win, visit kendrascardchallenges.com. This last page has a quick reference guide which is a chart to show what papers will need to be matched with others for each of the card sketches. This will help when choosing your papers so you'll know what needs to coordinate. It's just nice to have it all on one page. The sheet also lists all of the awesome company prize sponsors with links to their websites. If you have the PDF file pulled up on your computer or on your phone, the links will take you directly to their websites. Some of these are affiliate links, so if you make a purchase, this helps to support what I do. If you're not familiar with some of these companies, I hope you'll check them out and see what all they have to offer. And then on the right, it also explains about my Patreon membership program and it outlines all of the benefits that you can receive if you join as a patron. Creating these challenges each quarter is very time consuming. So joining as a patron is another way to help support my work. Patrons help to keep the challenges free each quarter. Starting at just $5 a month, you can receive a handmade card from me each month, plus access to a printer-friendly version of the challenge and access to all of the archived previous challenges. For $10, as an all-access patron, you can receive everything I've already mentioned, plus early access to new card challenges and bonus printable files each month, which can include digital sentiments, digital images, one-sheet wonder files, card-making tutorials, digital papers, card making kits, and more. And then for $25, VIP patrons receive additional benefits on top of what has already been mentioned. And these include a live crafty Zoom session and a card making kit each quarter. These card making kits are shipped out the last month of the quarter after three months of membership. And they include papers, cardstock, stamps and dies, or ephemera, which is pre-printed cutout images and embellishments. There is also a quarterly prize drawing available for patrons only who enter cards into the challenge and an exclusive Facebook group for all access and VIP patrons where you'll find resources for the bonus printables, additional instructions and other bonus content, access to group chats and events. 
For more information about my Patreon, you can scan the QR code on the printable or visit patreon.com forward slash Kendra's Card Challenges. I'll also have this linked in the description box below. Now I'll show you the first set of cards I made while creating this challenge. I finished off the Cool Basics paper pad by Pink and Main. Now I use these papers for challenge 11, so I figured I would finish off the paper pad and create some all occasion cards. I'm also using some digital sentiments from a few of my monthly bonus printables over the past few months. Now while I show you these cards, I'll provide a little more details about entering the challenge. Download the free printable on my website, kindredscardchallenges.com, and join the Facebook group called Kindred's Card Challenges. You can also find the link to this group in the description box below. This is where you will upload one photo of all 15 cards to the official entry photo album for the month you're submitting it for. Again, your photo should contain all 15 cards. There are different photo albums for each month during the quarter, and you'll need to include your name, state, and country of residence in the caption for the photo. This is required and is for prize awarding purposes. Most of the prizes can be won by card makers worldwide, but there are some physical products that need to be shipped, so I need to know which country you reside in. In the featured post at the top of the group, you'll find instructions that I posted a while back on how to locate and post to the photo albums using both a computer and a mobile device. It's important that you post in the photo album so that I can locate your entry. Just posting your photo on the group wall does not count as an entry, even though we love seeing those. There also are separate photo albums for each card sketch where you can share a photo of each card individually. Uploading the individual card photos is not a requirement to be entered to win one of the quarterly prizes anyway, but this is how you enter to win one of the monthly sketch prizes. Plus everyone can see the photos or the cards up close a little better. What's great about the individual albums is that you can post the pictures as you finish them throughout the quarter and still be eligible to win the sketch prizes, even if you don't get to finish all 15 cards. You can officially enter the challenge up to three times, but only once per month throughout the quarter. But please feel free to share all of your creations in the Facebook group if you decide to do more. If you're not on Facebook, you can upload your photo using the form linked on my website to officially enter the challenge. But please note that these entries will not be included in my monthly video showcase, and it should only include the one photo of all 15 cards. Now, if you post your creations on social media platforms, such as Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, please use the hashtags Kendra's Card Challenge 12 and KCC 12 so that others can see your creations and be inspired. So I hope you'll share your cards with us. By using these hashtags, this allows everyone to search for the cards made with the challenge. So if you're looking for more examples or inspiration, this is a great resource. Now I'll show you the papers that I'm using for my second set of cards. I'm using the Cozy Christmas Basics Paper Pad from Queen & Company. And these are the six sheets that I have assigned to each of the cutting templates, A through F. I'll be using both sides of these papers for my cards. And now I'll show you the best way for cutting the papers using the cutting guides. Before you get started, you want to have something to put the paper pieces in once you cut them to help keep you organized. I like to use cellophane sleeves that are numbered, but envelopes would also work. Look for the scissors on the cutting template, and this indicates where you cut first. So for paper A, the cutting guide shows that the first cut will be at 3 inches directly in the middle. So after cutting at 3 inches, take the long strip on the right, turn it, and then cut that down the middle at 3 inches. These pieces will be for sketches 2 and 4. I'm going to go ahead and place these pieces in the numbered cellophane bags. Then for the piece on the left, you'll turn it and make the next cut at 3 and a half inches. So you'll have that bottom piece for sketch six. Then with the top piece, you want to cut off that quarter inch narrow strip. So cut at two and three quarter inches. This little strip is for sketch seven. With the piece that's left, you need to cut at a diagonal. So use a ruler or your paper trimmer to measure three quarters of an inch from the left side and make a mark with your pencil. Then you'll line up that mark in the line of your paper trimmer and turn it so that the bottom right corner also lines up in that cut line. And this is what it should look like. You're basically extending out that rectangle. The bottom right corner will be covered up with a circle. So these two pieces will go in the sketch one bag. And again, the little strip goes in the sketch seven bag. 
Now for the sake of time, I won't put the pieces in the bag as I'm cutting the remaining papers like I did with paper A. I just wanted to show what I normally do after cutting each sheet. For paper B, the scissors show the first cut at the bottom, so you'll want to cut off half an inch. And then once that is cut, take the strip and turn it horizontally and cut at four and a quarter inch. This piece will be for sketch seven. Then with the little piece that's left, you're going to cut that in half to have two quarter inch pieces for sketches one and seven. Next, with the large piece, make sure you've turned it so that the six inch side is horizontal and then measure at one and a half inches to cut off that outer right piece, which is for sketch four. Then you'll cut again at one and a half inches. Then turn this strip and cut at one and a half inches so you'll have a square for sketch five. Then slide this small strip over and cut at two and three quarter inches for the rectangle piece for sketch five. And then you're left with a one and a quarter inch by one and a half inch piece that you will cut into a banner and this will be for sketch 10. And then for this far left three inch piece, you'll turn it so that the long edge is horizontal and cut at three inches. And we will be cutting a two and a half inch circle out of the top left of this square. The half circle will be for sketch three and the square piece will be for sketch two and the cutout part will hide behind the other three inch square at a diagonal. Then for the three by two and a half inch piece that's left, place the three inch side across the top and cut off a half inch strip and this will be for sketch nine. Then for the two and a half inch square that's left, you will cut out two different size half circles from this piece. You're going to want either a circle punch or some circle dies. I prefer to use a punch since it's easier. But if you're going to use a die, just place it in the corner as shown on the sketch. Tape the die to the piece and run it through your die cutting machine. I'm going to show you how to do this using a circle punch. This is a two and a half inch punch and I'm going to go ahead and cut out the half circle from the three inch square. So I want to line up the paper so that the edge shows in the middle of the circle and also make sure that one of the edges is lined up against the one side of the circle as close as you can get it. Now I'll be able to hide this cutout part behind the other square. Of course the square it will go behind will be bigger, but you won't be able to tell that it's not a full square. But the square with the cutout is for sketch two and the half circle is for sketch eight. And then on the two and a half inch circle, you can do this one one of two ways. You can either cut out the larger two and a half inch circle first and then cut the circle in half or you can cut the square in half and punch half circles. It's really up to you. But if you're using a circle punch, it's easier to use larger pieces. So that's why I cut out the whole circle first. Next, I'm going to cut out the circle or cut the circle in half. So half of two and a half is one and a quarter. So I'm going to mark this with a pencil and then place that in my cut line on my paper trimmer. And of course, having these dots on this pattern in a line, it helps me to keep things straight. But then you'll use this line and mark it up or mark up in the cut line and cut it in half. Then you'll take one of the half circles and you'll cut a one and three quarter inch half circle out of this one. Now dies would be easier for this part since I don't have edges to hang on to. But here I'm just trying to line up the circle in the middle halfway and then punch so that I'll have a one and three quarter inch half circle. Both will be for card three. Again, the small strip is for card nine and the other two and a half inch half circle is for card eight. The outer edges of these circles and the little triangles you cut out for the banners should be your only scraps for this challenge. Now let's go back to the strip for card 10 so I can show you a few options for how to cut the banner part out. Make sure you cut the banner on the right end on the one and a quarter inch side. And I like to use this punch here to cut out that little triangle piece. I'm trying to center this up as best as I can and line up the edges at the top part of the punch. Now, if you don't have this kind of punch or something similar that would do this effect, there's another way you could do it. You can just use your scissors and cut a slit up the center from the bottom and then cut from each corner up to the top of that slit, which I'll show you here in a bit, so don't worry. But this banner is for card 10. Now for paper C, our first cut will be this strip here on the right. So I'm going to make my first cut at five inches and I'll go ahead and cut the strip. Next, I'll turn it horizontal and cut at four and a half inches. 
Then you'll cut this small one and a half inch piece in half at three quarters of an inch. And these two pieces that will be cut into banners are for sketch 11 and the other is for sketch 13. Now you'll turn the large piece so that the six inch side is horizontal across the top and measure at one and a quarter inches to cut off this bottom piece here, which will be for sketch 14. And with the piece that's left, it is not a square. One side measures five inches, and then if you turn it, the other side measures four and three quarter. So you wanna make sure that the five inch side is horizontal across the top and then cut at two and a half inches. The large piece on the right is for card nine. And then with the piece on the left, we're gonna turn it and cut at two and a half inches. And this will be the square that we cut the two and a half inch circle from which will be for sketch eight. And then the piece that's left over should measure two and a half by two and a quarter. And this piece is for sketch six. So for the two and a half inch square, cut out your circle. Again, dies would probably be easier as you can see me struggling to get this two and a half inch square in the center of this punch. And I'm using the eraser part of my pencil to help scoot it where it should go. And I apologize that I went off camera here a little bit. So once you have that circle, it will be for card eight. Now back to these little banner pieces. If you happen to not cut these exactly the same size like me, you can always just trim the bigger one to be the same size as the other. But I'm gonna go ahead and cut the banners at the same time with my scissors like I explained earlier by finding the center as best as I can. And I'm gonna cut a slit from the bottom up, making sure that they're lined up before cutting and then cut from each edge to the top of that slit. If you have a large enough piece to use a punch like this, the punch would make this so much more accurate. But again, I'm finding the center and lining up the bottom edges with the top of the punch. Now for paper D, the scissors show that you'll cut off the bottom half inch strip first. So measure at five and a half inches and make that cut. And the strip will be for card seven. Now that this is five and a half by six, make sure that you have the six inch side across the top horizontal and next cut at three and three quarter inches. The piece on the right is for card sketch 13. And then you'll turn the left strip and cut at three inches and you'll have the larger piece for card 10 and the other is for card 14. Now for paper E, we're gonna make our first cut at three quarters of an inch. The paper cutting for this sheet is pretty easy. So this bottom strip, once you cut it, is for card seven. And then you'll turn the paper so that the six inch side is across the top and you'll cut the one inch strip off the right. So slide it over to five inches and cut. And then this strip will be for card 15. And then you'll turn the paper so that the longer edge is across the top and cut at four inches. So now you should have a four by five inch piece for card 11. And this other piece is a banner for card number 13. And again, I'm using the punch to cut this out. Now for the last one, paper F, the easiest one of all, your first cut will be at four inches according to the scissors, but you really could cut the bottom strip off first. It really doesn't matter. But I'm gonna measure at four inches first, and then I know I'll have to turn both pieces and cut off a three quarter inch strip from the bottom. The large panel is for card 15 and the four inch strip is for card seven. Then for the other strip, turn it and cut at five and a quarter. And the large piece is for card 12. And then the bottom piece you'll cut in half at one inch so that you'll have two banner pieces again, like we had for paper C. And it looks like I didn't cut these exactly right again, but that's okay. Like I showed before, just line them up and trim off the excess so that they're the same size. Not a big deal, it's just paper, right? It's okay if you mess up. Sometimes you can fix it like I'm doing here. And then other times you can be cutting and your mind wanders off and you accidentally cut it wrong where well, you can't fix it. But hopefully there's another sheet of the same pattern paper so you can try again. I've done this several times over the past few years since I've started the challenges. So it's not the end of the world. It's just paper, right? So again, I'm cutting my banners at the same time, same as before. And these banners are for sketch 11. Once you have all your papers cut and sorted by sketch number, you'll want to cut the layers according to the measurements on the card sketches using coordinating cardstock. All of the panels and layers on the sketches are either gray, black, or white, and the measurements of each are shown, along with some other suggestions on how to make the card a little more interesting by either adding an embossed panel, a stenciled background, or an additional piece of pattern paper, or you can keep it clean and simple. 
For the cards I'll be sharing in an upcoming video, I'll be using the red, green, black, or white cardstock for the layers, but I'll be looking at the colors and the patterns that I have for each card and which ones are used together to decide on what looks best. Remember, if you use double-sided paper, you can always flip it over and use the other side. Next, you'll want to decide how you want to decorate the cards, whether you use stamps, dies, or ephemera. It's really up to you. Add ribbon or fun embellishments. Just get creative and add your own personal touch. But you'll use the sketches to cut all of your layers. I'll be sharing the process of how to make all of these cards here on my YouTube channel soon, so make sure you're a subscriber and turn on those notifications so you don't miss any of my new uploads. I'm super excited because we have a lot of really cool things planned to share with you this quarter. I want to mention there will be a big giveaway video hop on October 2nd where each of the video design team members will be sharing the card making process for each of the 15 sketches in this challenge. And you'll have a chance to win a goodie bag filled with card making supplies valued at over $100. I hope you'll hop along with us to get some wonderful ideas and tips for challenge 12 and have a chance to win. We have some awesome guest designers coming up as well. In addition, the inspiration team will be sharing projects on Instagram and other social media to show how these sketches can be used beyond the challenge in everyday card making, scrapbooking, tags, home decor, and more. They will be posting on a variety of social media platforms throughout the quarter, so I hope you'll click on the link to my creative team member page that's in the description box below. On this page, you'll find a list of all the team members' links. I hope you'll follow them to find additional card making inspiration. We will be having hops each week throughout the quarter where you can have even more chances to win prizes. These will be on either Instagram or YouTube. And these hops will showcase creations made with products from some of the Kendra's Card Challenge's super sponsors and the card sketches from this challenge. And we'll have some guest designers joining in as well. The first Instagram hop will be on October 5th of 2023. All of these opportunities will be posted in the Kendra's Card Challenge's Facebook group. So if you don't want to miss out, make sure you join and turn on notifications within the group on Facebook. Now let's talk about all of the amazing prizes you can win for Kendra's Card Challenge number 12. We have 20 company prize sponsors this quarter with prizes valued at more than $1,000. The sponsors for this challenge are Altenew, Artful Angel, Brutus Monroe, Catherine Pooler, Colorado Craft Company, Crafty Meraki, Gina K Designs, Cat Scrappiness, Craft and Kimmy Stamps, Lawn Fawn, Not Too Shabby Shop, Pear Blossom Press, Pink and Main, Pixie Dust Designs, Polka Doodles, Prickly Pear Stamps and Dies, Scrappy Tails Crafts, This Calls for Confetti, Uniquely Creative, and Whimsy Stamps. Plus, there are some additional prizes you can win, such as card making kits, dies, stamps, and mystery envelopes. Lots of card making supplies. Additionally, winners will be chosen each month for each of the sketches. The sketch winners will all receive a handmade card, plus a die set, and access to one of my digital downloads. You can see the full list of prizes and what each company has donated on my website at kendrascardchallenges.com. I don't know about you guys, I love making cards, but it makes it even better to have a chance to win prizes. Remember, you have until December 31st of 2023 to create your cards and get them posted to the Kendra's Card Challenges Facebook group or uploaded to the form on my website. If you're watching this video after December 31st, you can access this printable through my Spring Store or you can download all archived printables through my Patreon page as a patron member. Of course, I'd like to take a moment to thank all of the Kendra's Card Challenges patrons shown here. The support I receive from patrons is what keeps this challenge free for all to enjoy each quarter. I really appreciate everyone for your generosity and support. It really means a lot to me. And I hope you enjoy your Happy Mail each month and the other benefits that you receive as a patron. If you think you might give this challenge a try, leave me a comment. Also, if you're new to my channel, let me know how you found this video or heard about the challenge. I'd also love it if you'd give this video a thumbs up and share this challenge with any of your crafty friends who you think might enjoy it. If you're a subscriber to my YouTube channel already, thank you so much for your continued support. And if you're not, I hope you'll subscribe and join us for challenge 12. 
Don't forget to check out the YouTube KCC 12 giveaway hop that starts October 2nd and ends October 9th of 2023 and the Instagram hop that starts on October 5th for more chances to win prizes. I really appreciate you watching this video. I can't wait to see what you create and I hope to see you again soon. Have a wonderful day.